Hi, hello. So I'm gonna give you a quick warning before I start the video. Um, I do zoom in and zoom out a lot while making this particular digital art piece. So if you're very sensitive to that, either watch with caution or don't watch at all. I will not be offended. And um, yeah, let's get into the video. You have been warned. Okay, a little bit about the digital setup and also a quick little bit about last week's art piece and the supply review. So this is my first digital art I'm recording. I've drawn tons of other digital art that you can see on um, Pinterest. Uh, the the um, plug, my shameful plug, will be at the end of the video because I do not want to say it now. So yes, I am drawing on Flip a Clip and yes, I'm also using Flip a Clip to edit a drawing. I drew on Flip a Clip and I would like to tell them that they should add a screen recorder to their thing because I think it would be a lot easier because then you could just edit in app. That would be so much easier. So if they ever need some suggestion on a big update or something, there you go, add a screen recorder. And last week's video, I wanted to give you a quick update. So this art piece is from last week's video when I did a Crayola signature um, blending markers, they have brush tips and stuff, and this was the art piece that came from it. I didn't really do any blending, because I didn't really find that they blended too well on the paper I was using. Sorry, my voice turned to, like, gravel there for a second. Anyway, so, the, the actual markers were not blending well on the paper, but they look really nice on the paper. So, I would not say that they are definitely not professional art tools if you're doing professional work, but they are definitely great if you have art block or if you just want to mess around. So yeah, that's pretty much what I all I wanted to say is I will definitely be using them and I do recommend them if you just want to have some fun. So yeah, and then time to get into this week's video topic. So yeah, let's go. So you already probably know what we're talking about because you probably read the title. Either that or you accidentally tapped on it while you were scrolling. I do that quite often, so I would not be surprised if anyone else did it. So we're going to be talking about video games. And no, I will not be covering the topic that all video games make you violent or how scientists are trying to prove that video games only make you violent if you have violent thoughts. Well, video game designers, I have violent thoughts. And yet I play video games and they still haven't correlated with each other. So... You guys are safe there for a little while. Um, so I wanted to just talk about some games that I personally really love and the reasons why I love them. And also some games that I don't love and for reasons why I don't love them. And um, I'm not going to be talking much Pokemon because I literally have a video devoted to Pokemon. So no, I will not be talking about Pokemon games. Although primarily, I am much more of just a Pokemon gamer. I've definitely been trying to extend my palette because there's so many amazing games in the world. And I'm really excited to talk about them. So yeah, let's get into our lovely video game topics. So first off, I really want to mention one that is pretty common. I'm really into games that allow you to be creative. Basically like customizing things and stuff like that. So you can honestly probably get the picture of what I'm about to tell you. And it does have Pokemon modifications in it and it literally is creative as one of its modes. It is Minecraft. And yes, I know this is an extremely popular game and how dare I mention it. Oh Nibs, how dare you mention Minecraft as one of your favorite games? Well, I do love it. I've been playing it lately on a special, um, a survival server where I'm going to make a large farm, trade with all these villagers, probably upgrading, customize their houses, turn the village into what I would like it, and create a large waterfall off of it because it's on a giant hill. So yeah. I would definitely recommend Minecraft. It's got a lot of different modes for all kinds of players and all these incredible mods that just make the game even better. I do not really have any mods on my my actual servers because I do not have the time to figure that out right now. <laughs> and I just wanna say that like you don't have to play on survival all the time. You can also play on creative, which allows you to just endlessly build or explore without having the possibility of dying. You can also turn on all these different modes. Like for instance, if you die, you can keep anything in your inventory and such and such like that. So yeah, I would definitely recommend Minecraft if you're looking for some creative games. I've also got some other slightly creative, but also more relaxing games that are, there are two of them, one being Cozy Grove, which allows you to 
to move certain objects like for instance it has trees that you can plant it's got flowers that you can place down it's got all these objects you can upgrade your house you can do all the errands for all the spirits around your area so yeah you can tell i've played a lot of cozy grove i'm past the 150 days mark anyway another one more game that i want to mention and i'm not going to mention a ton of it since i've just started playing the game is a game called aka and it's relatively customizable too but it's more 3d it is set in a post in an after war world where you are a red panda who's dealing with tons of flashbacks and you have to help other people who also are dealing with bad trauma from this war and it's really great you you can also feed these baby dragons as a quest and I'll put a picture on them because I want to make an exception because look at how freaking cute they are. Oh my goodness. Anyway, we have other games to talk about. So yeah, let's go. Speaking about the word let's go, let's talk about some Mario games. So I know Nintendo and Pokemon, they, you know, they work together a lot because that's, they're the producer of the Pokemon games. But I wanted to talk about Mario games because I feel like that I haven't really talked a lot about them. So I do, I'm really excited for the new one coming out. I'm excited to see Mario as a freaking elephant. Like what the heck? That's going to be very cool. Great job on your part, Game Freak. My mom will be very happy. She loves elephants. Anyway. So I wanted to talk about a few Mario games and Sonic games I've also played because I think that they're very important too. I grew up playing the 64, so yes, I did play Pokemon Stadium on it. I also played um, snowboarding and the vintage 007. Oh my goodness. Um, but we also had the Sega Genesis. So those are the two games I was primarily raised on. And the Sega Genesis had to be one of my favorite games. I loved Sonic on there. They also had Dr. Eggman's Bean Machine, which was just another version of Tetris. And I used to play that all the time with my brother. And we would just sit on the floor while I absolutely destroyed him at Dr. Eggman's Bean Machine because I am a Tetris master. Probably not. I'm joking. Anyway, so you can tell that I have a long history with Sonic games. I don't really play any of the new ones, though, because I, I don't know. I, they don't seem as good. So, yeah. And for Mario games, I play, you know, all the generic ones. Mario Kart, I have Mario Party, my brother's Mario Maker. And so we just play like those basic ones. But I also know some of the old ones, like the the, the original Mario Bros game, this one. And uh, you know what? It's a great game. I play it on the little special consoles thing that they put on the Switch that allow you to play old games. Nintendo, if you're listening to this, please put the vintage Pokemon games on there. My goodness, I've been waiting. I told you guys I wouldn't mention Pokemon, but I did. Anyway, here's some games that I actually really don't like. And also, one game that I do like, but not the actual game. So... One game that I do not like the gameplay, but I love the character design and the character lore is Overwatch. My brother plays Overwatch and he really likes the game. I like the character designs. I'm not a big gun game person. I really don't like gun games. They're very stressful. And um, for, for a lot of gun games, I really just say no because they just don't look fun. No, I do not want to play your nitty-gritty war game. What the heck when I could play something like Minecraft and build myself a little dirt house and gr and a small garden and probably go to the nether and destroy an entire world and terraform the earth. <laughs> um, so yeah, Overwatch is probably the one exception that I would say because I really, really like the character design and the character lore and I've heard some really good like fan-made songs one of my favorite being No Mercy from The Living Tombstone. Really great song. So that's one game that I have a great exception for because of the great artwork. It's just a nice looking game. So here are some games that I actually hate and would never recommend anyone play. So I play Minecraft, which means I must really like Roblox. No, I do not like Roblox. Roblox is not a cool game. The fandom reminds me a lot of My Hero Academia. And if you know the My Hero Academia fandom, you know the My Hero Academia fandom. I don't even watch this show and I've seen some things. And those things are not always great. There are some people on that fandom who have great intentions 
and then there are some who don't. And it's the same for Roblox. It's just mostly bad intentions. And if you're a small child and you play Roblox and you're watching this, please be careful. There are some real creeps who like to talk to children. And I don't want to say anything too gruesome um, because I don't want to get too dark about it. But please really be careful. There are some real creeps on there. So, yeah. Roblox never would recommend anyone. It's a terrible looking game. So, yeah. That's definitely not one I will recommend to anybody. So, one of my cousins had recently just got this game that I'm going to mention and or trash on, and she kept saying, oh, you should play this game. I bet you would love this game. I was like, no, I'm not really into gun games. And she kept insisting that the character designs were incredible, and I was like, no, my brother plays this game. I've seen the game. I do not like it. I've seen its play. I've seen its characters. I do not like them. And she was like, yeah, but I bet you'd like this one. I was like, no, those ones are actually my least favorite. She was referring to things like Banana Head, fish head because it's freaking Fortnite. I do not like Fortnite. And it's not that I don't like like trendy games. It's just trendy games aren't very fun. Like Minecraft is a trendy game, but I love Minecraft. And like Overwatch is kind of trendy, but I only really like the art style for it. It's not that it is trendy. I just don't like these games. I hate this game. I hate it with a passion and would never recommend anyone use this game ever. It's not a good game. And my brothers reported that on his head at head, head it head set that he's heard literal children screaming the F word at him while he helps them heal. And to be completely honest, I am not surprised. And that's a little concerning. He said that he heard one of these kids actually arguing with his mom about the game because he would not get off of it. And literally telling her to effing leave the room. So yeah, would not recommend Fortnite. Looks like it also has an even worse fandom. My Hero Academia, you are now welcome again due to the Fortnite fandom. Just joking. Never would recommend that fandom. <sighs> I know this is another technically a like half trendy. It's kind of going out of trend. And pretty much as an artist, I'm legally like I legally have to talk about this or I will be arrested. Just a joke, I will not be arrested if I don't talk about the game. But this game, I think some of you can give me some sympathy for because I have some really good reasons I don't like this game. And that game is Gotcha Life. How dare you nibs not get your art style from Gotcha Life and play this game and learn all the accessories and how to draw them? No, of course I didn't start my art journey off by playing Gotcha Life and copying all my characters off of it. My inspiration came from the Pokemon Adventures manga and pretty much every anime slash anime-esque cartoon I ever saw. So yeah, that's pretty much my style in a nutshell. But I don't like this game for a lot of reasons. The actual game is not bad. It's just a dress-up game that you can play with and tell stories and record videos and put them on YouTube. And I know that there's tons of people with great, wholesome intentions. But God, this phantom. I'm not even joking this time. My Hero Academic can come right back down and sit right next to me and talk to me about its fandom. I... This fandom is really creepy. To all children... Please be careful what you're watching on this app. This app is notorious for videos of murder, of certain things to children or minors, certain, like, very creepy, just not good for children, horror, sometimes love stories that should not be on the internet, there's just so much, and I don't want to say something and immediately regret it and have to, like, stop recording for a second, you know, make sure YouTube doesn't can me, but really, I need you to be careful when you're playing Gotcha Life. People are extremely dark on this game, like, even worse than Roblox and Fortnite. I don't even know what to tell people who play the game. Just really be careful. There are some really messed up things that you can find on this freaking game. And I don't want people to play it and get scarred. I don't want people to watch something that they shouldn't have watched 
because it had a cool thumbnail and a cute character and didn't say anything. It's kind of like the whole character gate thing that they had on, like, kids' YouTube a long time ago with, like, pregnant Elsa's having a baby kind of thing. It's kind of maybe sometimes a little bit worse because it's very accessible to children and minors and I please be careful when you play this game it's not a game that I would recommend to anyone because of its creepiness and I don't I don't know what goes on in the game I don't know if you can talk to people in the game and I would never be like oh if you can talk to people like please be like I would always say please be careful but like for this one I just say don't even start a conversation at all Unless it's, like, a friend or something. Like, if you're just playing this game for the wholesome intention of dressing a character up and playing, like, like, I don't know. Like, playing really wholesomely, like, oh, my character's going to the store. This is what they're buying, blah, blah. If you're playing it like that, I feel like it's fine. Like, it's totally fine. And that the game is okay. But if you're playing it really creepy, like, oh, this character's a science experiment. And they're going to kill, like, everyone in the building. And it's going to be a big massacre and stuff. And there's going to be a lot of blood, depression, and kind of sexual themes. Then I would never want anyone to be a part of that or to see it in that way. And I would never openly talk about that like that. So, yeah, this game really does upset me. And I really want people to be careful when they're on it. So, yeah, thank you for letting me talk to you about video games. Sorry that the video got a little dark at the end. But... I, it's important that I talk about it a little bit and warn people about it. So, yes, it's time for my shameful plug. So, I am Nibs Chandler on Pinterest and Nibs is Sketching on YouTube. So, if you ever want to support me more, you can just go to Pinterest and look at all my art that I do there and don't put on YouTube. I probably recently just put up a Soul Eater fan art if you're that interested. No, I will not put a picture up right now because um, I don't really want to. So yeah, and I will see you later. Bye!